My name's Samir and I'm a Maple product manager. I spend a lot of my time talking to engineers, scientists and other technical professionals who want to know more about Maple. They want to know what value it can provide for them, what the philosophy of the product is and how it can help them solve their problems. Today is an introduction to Maple. Um, this webinar is aimed at uh, people who have never used Maple before, people who have tinkered about in Maple a little bit and just want to find out more about what it can do and maybe even seasoned professionals in Maple, people who have been using Maple for a long time, will learn about a few new features that they didn't know existed. Um, first of all, I want to start off by showing everyone a few applications just to give everyone a sense of what a complete maple worksheet a complete maple document looks like first thing i'd like to stress is that maple is used literally everywhere by everyone we have a very diverse body of users everyone from aerospace engineers chemical engineers people in earth and building science electrical engineers hydraulics mechanical we have a large body of users employing Maple for signal, image, and audio processing, structural engineering, thermal engineering, and much more besides that. Let's start off by looking at this worksheet. Now, a Maple document can have many different looks. And what you see on screen is just one particular look for a Maple document. At the top, I have a diagram and a description of the problem. I then have some parameters, some properties of this structural steel shape I'm pulling out of a database of structural steel properties. And all of the properties such as the warping constant, the cross-sectional area have units associated with them. Below that, I have some more parameters. I have some equations that I've entered in Maple in natural math notation. So we have things like overline division, superscripts for powers, proper Greek letters, and so on. And at the very bottom, I have my results. Now, Maple it's fully electronic, so if I change a parameter value here, and let's even change the type of structural steel shape we're analyzing, and I hit this button, or I use the appropriate keyboard shortcut, those changes cascade down the length of this Maple document, and all of my results, my dependencies, my plots, if there were any, update to reflect the new parameter values. Now, my results at the bottom have units associated with them, and we'll talk about this in greater detail later, but if I left click on one of the units, I can mouse over to the context panel on the right hand side and rescale the result to any other dimensionally consistent unit. So feet, meters, and so on. Now, if I go to the file menu and select print preview, this is what the Maple document would look like if I exported it to a PDF or printed it out on paper as well. Now, at various points in this document, I have text, I have images, a header graphic. So, as well as doing the actual math, the actual calculations, this Maple document records my analyses, my assumptions, everything I need to uh, uh, deploy this calculation document to a broader audience. So this is just one particular look for a Maple document. Now, you can have Maple documents that look like this as well. Here, I don't have any equations. I don't have any math. I simply have a reporting dashboard, a flowchart with some 
results at various points. And I have some, uh, some text boxes, some drop down menus at the bottom, which allow me to change parameter values. So if I go to this drop down box and select a different uh, parameter, you can see this plot, this table of results, and probably some of the numbers in this flow chart changing to reflect this new parameter value. You can also use the text boxes to change parameter values as well. Now, as well as drop down menus and text boxes, if it was appropriate, I could have added interactivity to this document with sliders, dials, gauges, widgets, check boxes, radio buttons, toggles, and many other UI components as well. Let's put that to one side. Now we'll come back and look at more Maple applications later. But let's show you a few things from scratch. Now Maple is a tool for technical computation. It has a command library. There's well over 6,000 commands in the Maple library and I'm not going to show you all of them today. I'll just show you a couple of the most commonly used commands. So fsolve is a very commonly used command for solving an equation or a group of equations numerically. So if x plus log x is equal to 4 then x is about 2.9. There's another command which solves an equation symbolically a single equation or a group of equations. So here are the two roots to my quadratic equation. So there's about 6,000 commands and with a command library that large you need good easily searchable electronic help and I like to think we offer that in Maple. If you go to this search box here and type in the name of a command that you want to search for. You can click on the first link and this takes you to the help page for that command. So all of the help pages within Maple have the same look and feel. At the top there's a pretty detailed description of the syntax of the command but if you scroll down there's usually works examples that you can grab and copy and paste into your own worksheet and modify and there's often links to more details here at the very bottom. And there's links on the right hand side to other relevant commands. And these links on the top right hand corner are a great way of learning about the broader ecosystem of Maple's technical computation tools. Now there are commands which are loaded when you first start up Maple and then there are commands which are loaded upon request. These commands are, are um, kept in what's known as packages. There's about 120, 130 different packages. There's also packages that you can download from the Maple Cloud as well. Now this is a commonly used package of commands for matrix computation. And this is how I load a package of commands using the with command. So here are, here are all of the additional commands that you can use. So now using tools from this package, I could do matrix computation. I could uh, manipulate matrices, generate random matrices. Let me just do this. As you can see, Maple has command completion. So if you type in the first few letters of a command, then you and then you hit the uh, escape key on your keyboard, the command completion menu pops up on screen, and you can simply use the up and down arrow keys to select the command you want, then hit tab to complete the command. So let's have a matrix with ten rows, ten columns. with random numbers between 0 
and 1.0. If I hit enter now, this is my matrix. Now, there are many other commands and packages within Maple. I think I said there's about 120. If you go to the tools menu and select load package and you scroll down to the very bottom and select list all packages, this takes you to a help page which describes all of Maple's built-in packages. So there are tools for manipulating audio, there are tools for connecting to CAD systems, code generation, um, there's even tools for deep learning, machine learning, and there's much more besides that. It, Maple really is a very broad, rich ecosystem of technical computation tools. We also have the context panel. Let me just type in a simple expression and we'll see what happens to the panel on the right hand side here. So if I just type in x times cos x, you can see the panel on the right hand side populating with relevant mathematical options, mathematical functions. So for this expression, Maple has decided these are relevant commands. So let's just pick one of these. Let's plot the result. And there we go. Now the context panel is truly context sensitive. So if I've typed in, say, a differential equation, Maple understands that this is a differential equation and gives me new items in the context panel for solving this differential equation symbolically. If I enter in a Laplace function or a transfer function, Maple understands what this means and gives me a new series of tools for creating phase and magnitude plots, calculating the phase and gain margin, turning this into a state-based model or discretizing it. Let's just generate a magnitude plot. Now bear in mind, all I'm doing to get these results is pointing and clicking. So with matrices, if I type in matrix, Maple understands that this is a matrix and gives me relevant mathematical options. So there's the Cholesky decomposition. So let's see what happens when I import an audio file. So Maple distributes a series of sample audio files when you install the products. And I'm just going to load up one of them. So when you load an audio file, Maple gives you some summary information such as the sample rate, the number of channels, the duration of that audio file. On the context panel, you also get a new signal processing menu with tools for analyzing the frequency contents, calculating FFTs, generating spectrograms, and more. So let's just examine the frequency contents with a periodogram. One of Maple's core features is its ability to understand units and dimensions. Here, I've just added two quantities in joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Here I have the result. The context panel understands that this is a united quantity and gives me tools for converting the result. So I could convert the result to BTU per pound per degree Fahrenheit. I could also add in some sensible numeric formatting as well. So you can also access UI properties. So the properties of things like sliders, dials, gauges, and widgets, 
with the context panel as well. So here I've clicked on this slider and here on the right hand side, the context panel intelligently allows me to change the appearance, the value at the lowest and highest position of the slider. I can even access the code that I can program to uh, script the behavior of this slider. We have a pretty neat feature in the context panel called the plot builder. So here I've just typed in an inequality. If I select the plot builder on the context panel, Maple analyzes the expression and generates the appropriate plot and gives me uh, ways of altering the appearance of the plot, creating animations and so on. So let's move on from the context panel and look at some of the other features of Maple. So I briefly mentioned units. So there's just one or two features I want to explore about units. And I'll do this with a couple of applications. So units flow from parameter definitions through to analyses, equations, and into your final results. Now, this is a simple design problem. Here, I'm solving for the span of this parabolic suspension cable. That's this value A here. I have all of the other parameters. So this is my equation. Again, it's entered in natural math notation. Here are some parameters, and these have been entered with the units. So L is 100 feet and D is about 2.7 feet. And here I'm solving my equation for A, the span. And the results flow out with units as well. So if I wanted to, I could change the, some of the design parameters, hit this button or use the keyboard shortcut and I get updated results, again with the appropriate unit. And using the context panel, I can rescale the result to any consistent unit and add in sensible numeric formatting. It's a pretty nice feature. We also have a full library of thermophysical and thermodynamic data for fluid, fluid mixtures and gases within Maple as well. And I'll just highlight the use of this thermophysical properties data with a couple of applications. Um, let's try this one. So again, at the top, I have a diagram, a description of the problem. I'm then loading my thermophysical properties package using the with command. I'm then defining some parameters such as some temperatures. And these have been defined with in degrees Celsius. Now for this specific application, I need the thermophysical properties of air and I can extract those using the properties command from the thermophysical data package. Here I'm extracting the enthalpy of air at a temperature of T1 and a pressure of P1. T1 and P1 have been defined here. I'm also extracting the entropy as well Now I can change any of the design parameters in my document. Let's change the temperature. Let's change the pressure. 
and the compression ratio here as well. If I recalculate my whole document, Maple extracts updated thermophysical data for air and all of my results and dependencies update to reflect the new parameter values. Now there's hundreds of fluids within the thermophysical properties data. Um, one part of the thermophysical properties package I was using recently were the properties for humid air. So Maple will give you the properties of humid air such as the dry bulb temperature, the humidity ratio, the wet bulb temperature, um, entropies, specific densities, relative humidities, and so on. There's a lot there in the package. Let's close down some of these worksheets. So Maple also has an extensive series of tools for signal, image, and audio processing. And again, I'll highlight some of these through an application. And let's pick this one. So there's a couple of packages that I've used in this application. So the signal processing package and the audio tools package. All of these are built into Maple. It's not an add-on. So in this application, we're simply importing some audio files, examining the frequency contents with spectrograms and periodograms, applying a filter, and then viewing the properties of the processed audio. So again, I start off by reading in an audio file. It could be any audio file, but here we've simply imported one of the standard audio files that ships with Maple. And then I view the waveform, sorry, the spectrogram and the power spectrum as well. I can then generate various types of filters apply those filters to the audio and regenerate the spectrograms and periodograms. We can also analyze images using Maple signal processing tools as well because an image is just a signal. So in this application, we're going to import a noisy image and filter out some of the noise. So this time we've loaded two packages, the signal processing package and the image tools package, and we'll read in a noisy image. And this actually is a noisy image of the Maplesoft offices in Waterloo, Ontario. And as you can see, it's been polluted by some periodic bands of noise. Now, if you take the FFT of this image and visualize it as, and, visualizing, and visualize the resulting spectral data as an image, this is what you see. So this is, a visualization of the spectral data of this image. Now, periodic noise is usually identified as little dots of uh, uh, high intensity, which are usually mirrored around the axes. So this axis, this point, and this point. What I can do now is apply a notch filter, try to blank out the spectral data, these two points of light. And all, all I've done, and I've done that here. I've identified the indices of these two part of this part of the spectral data. And I'm saying that anything there is equal to zero. 
and this is what the resulting visualization of the spectral data looks like. I've blanked out those two points of light, those two uh, high intensity points. Now, if I take the inverse FFT of that image, this is what I end up with. I've successfully filtered out the vast majority of the periodic noise. You can still see some bands of the periodic noise at the fringes of the image, but it's a much cleaner looking image. It looks much better. Now, people often work with data, data files with Maple, and it's often difficult to manage an analysis project with multiple Maple worksheets and multiple data files. A few releases ago, we introduced a new file format called a workbook. A workbook is a file container. It can contain many Maple worksheets as well as data files such as spreadsheets, images, and other types of data as well. Now, the worksheet that you're actually looking at right now is actually housed in a workbook. If I left click on the workbook tab here, I see the workbook navigator. This lists all of the images, the data, and the Maple code files in this work in this uh, workbook. So if I double click on this spreadsheet, that loads up the data in the spreadsheet. If I double click on this MW file, this Maple worksheet, this loads up the worksheet in this workbook. And this is a Maple code file. All of these elements aren't separate files on my laptop, on my computer. They're all housed inside the workbook. So if I need to email an analysis project to a colleague or a client, I only need to attach one email, one file to an email, not several. It just, um, it, uh, it just makes managing a multi-file project much easier. We also give you various ways of protecting your analyses as well. Let's look at three of them. You can encrypt Maple programs, Maple analyses files. You can distribute that encrypted work and users can actually execute the code, feed in new parameters and get the results, but they can't actually see the code. So this is a Maple program which calculates the adiabatic flame temperature of octane. This was actually written in a Maple code edit region. So in the code edit region, we have features like syntax highlighting, command completion, bracket matching, automatic indentation, and so on. It's a nice environment for creating moderately complex programs. We can save an encrypted version of this procedure to an outside file called a Maple Library Archive using the save, save lib command. So now I have a file called flametemp.mla it's a Maple language archive file, which contains an encrypted version of this procedure. At this point, what I can do is load up or start a new worksheet and insert a reference to my encrypted procedure. This allows me to see, this allows me to use the encrypted procedure to get new results so I can feed in parameters and get updated results but if I try to look inside the encrypted procedure 
well, this is what I see. It's not human readable, it's encrypted. So this is a really secure way of distributing your analyses and work. And, uh, work. We've already touched on workbooks. I've already mentioned that you can keep multiple Maple worksheets in a workbook. You can actually password protect worksheets in a workbook as well. So here I've loaded up a new workbook with two Maple files in it. There's the main.nw file, which is the worksheet that you're looking on now, and then there's a password protected file, ideal Brayton cycle .mw. And you can see it's locked down and password protected with this padlock icon. Now from any worksheet in this workbook, I could actually run this password protected worksheet, send in parameters and get data results. And I can do that with the document tools run worksheet command. So somewhere inside ideal brace and cycle .mw, I've defined the quantities that can be fed into this document and the result that I want to extract from the document as well. So here I'm feeding obviously some temperatures in, I'm reading a pressure in, I can execute this command, I can get updated results. But if I try to double click on this worksheet to open it, well, Maple's asking me for the password. And unless I know the password, I can't get into this document. Now, I think I remember the password for this specific document. It's actually Maple. If I do that, Maple loads up the password protected document. Now there's another neat way of protecting your interactive Maple document from accidental edits. So this is another Maple application it has some text boxes which allow me to change parameter values. There's this button here which allows me to get updated results. But if I look at the bottom of the Maple interface, there's a checkbox, editable, which is currently checked. If I uncheck it, this document is not editable. So that means I can't delete any of the text inside the document. I can't cut, move, copy or paste to any of the interactive components. What I can do is change parameter values and get updated results. And this is actually a neat way of protecting interactive Maple applications from accidental edits. So with a language and application as rich as Maple, you need lots of tutorial and training material. And I like to think we've done a pretty good job in providing you with uh, uh, pedagogical material, which allows you to make the most of the application. These are housed within Maple itself, but there's also plenty of web-based material as well. I'm particularly fond of the Maple Application Center. This is an online library of well over two or 3,000 Maple documents. Uh, they're all free for you to download. Some have been developed by our customers and users. Some have been developed by us. They're all divided up into a number of categories. So under engineering, I have uh, various uh, sub, uh, sub disciplines of engineering. I have lots of resources for maths as well. And all of these applications and worksheets are are free for you to download and use in your own work.
Within the product, we have many different resources. One particular resource I'm fond of is the Maple Portal for Engineers. And this is what it looks like. You can access it by typing in Maple Portal slash engineer. If I hit enter now, it brings up this landing page. This is just a curated collection of applications, worksheets, tutorials and tips for engineers. I'm particularly fond of the application gallery, which is just a library of pre-built applications across a number of disciplines. You may have seen some of these applications in the uh, uh, webinar today, but there's much more besides that.